it's Mac. Um, today we're going to work on assemblies. Uh, you should have been working in assemblies, uh, the things that were given to you through Solid Professor, where they give you a video. Um, today I'm going to do the video for the rotating slider mechanism. It is probably one of the easier assemblies to do from scratch. So let's begin. So we want to open up a new assembly. It's going to be a standard IAM, I for inventor, AM for assembly. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start to place our items. If you look at the PDF that goes along with it and you look at the pictures, you're going to see that you will need only a handful of parts. Um, so we're going to need a base. So we're going to place the base first. So make sure that you save all of the parts here in Inventor. Um, let's go to rotating slider. Let's pick the groove base. We're going to open it. Right now we have not placed it, but once I do a left click, it is placed. If I don't um, press escape or do a right click in OK, every time I click, it's going to place this piece. So I'm going to do a right click in OK. So now I have my base piece placed. Um, what I like to do is since it's my first piece, the first piece is always assumed grounded, but it's not always grounded. So one of two ways, you can either highlight in your browser and come to grounded, or if you select the item, so you can see that I have selected this because the lines change colors. I'm going to right click and I'm going to press grounded. Now it can't move anymore. And we really kind of want that once we start to uh, assemble our part. The next thing I'm going to place is I'm going to place the block. And the cool part is they're going to give you a preview of your item before you place it. So I know this is the part that I want. So I want to open this block and I need two. For me, I find it easier for me to place my parts kind of where I need them. So I'm going to place one block here and one block on this side because that's where I'm going to put them in my part. So I have my two blocks placed. And the last thing that I need to place is the arm. So I'm going to come here and select arm. That is the arm. I'm going to open it and I only need one. So I'm going to place it in between. So now I have all my pieces placed. Um, I do have some things that I can move. So my blocks I can move, my arm I can move. But I made my uh, base grounded. In other words, if you would think about putting something together like in real time, it's difficult to put two moving pieces together. So you normally stabilize one. And so grounding it is going to stabilize it. I still can come to my view cube and I can rotate everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go home. So what I wanna do is, I want to put these blocks in these grooves and they need to be able to slide. So here is where um, in Inventor, you have to be very specific. Um, assemblies are not hard, but you have to be very specific in what you're telling it to do. For this part, we're going to mate faces. So I'm going to mate the bottom of this block to this inside track on the base. Now, because my base is grounded, that's great. If I use my view cube, it moves everything around and I don't want to move everything around. Here, I just want to move this one individual piece. So I'm going to put my cursor over it. Notice that it turns red. I'm going to do a right click and I'm going to select free rotate. This allows me to rotate only that part and I can rotate it till I get it to where I can use it to do my mates. So now that I have it rotated, I'm gonna make this bottom face with the inside of this track, the bottom part of this track. So I'm gonna to come to constrain. In this constrain, we can mate and join. I'm sorry, we can mate and flush. Uh, we will use the flush. That's gonna make your faces even. So let's start with mate first. So 
Notice when I select the side or the face that I need, the arrow is showing you the direction that it's going to meet or the specific face that you're going to meet. So I'm going to meet this bottom with this inside track. See how that arrow is pointing up? And it's going to make that little noise, that little cowbell noise. We're going to click apply. So notice it's not perfectly in there. The only thing it did was it made sure that the bottom face is touching the face inside this track. The next thing I want to do, and which is actually kind of cool, is that even though it's made it, I can still move it out. So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come and do another free rotate because I want to rotate this side with this inside of this track. So after I free rotate, I'll right click and OK, come back to constrain. I'm going to make this side of the block with this inside piece there. And if you notice now, and I'm going to hit apply, please press apply or it'll just undo everything you did. Um, this can move now. And then the last thing I would want to do is I would want to make sure that the top face of my base is flush with the top part of the block and apply. So I don't, it doesn't flush at this time because it is designed to sit slightly above so we can cancel that and notice now my block is sliding within this track so now that we've done one we're going to come and do the exact same thing to the other block i'm going to hover over it right click and do free rotate oops it highlighted the wrong block free rotate and I just want to rotate this so that I can get to the bottom. And it's really kind of cool because it, does, it doesn't have to be in a perfect position, but as long as I can see the bottom. Okay, I'm going to come to constrain. And I want it on this other side of the track. So it is there. Click apply. And now I'm going to mate this with this inside. Now. It is in its track, so now it can slide back and forth. So I have my two blocks in place. The next thing I want to do is I want to attach my arm. So these two holes here need to fit over these holes, and that's going to make everything move. So when we mate these pieces together, um, we want to find the center line. And we're going to mate center lines. And you'll see it because it'll be a line that goes straight through the circle portion. So let's come to constrain. And this is where it gets to be very, very tedious. So once you find the line, you want to click it. All right. So I want to mate this center line with this center line. So now these center lines are mated and we're going to click apply. The next thing is I'm going to make this center line with this center line and click apply. So all I've done was basically put this arm over those two holes. Um, it's not done yet. I want to then come and I want to make those uh, top pins flush with the top of the arm. So I'm gonna come here into flush and I'm gonna click the top part of that pin with the top part of um, the arm and click apply. Notice they both were flush because they're the same piece. So now that I've done that, I've actually finished the assembly for the rotating slider. And then the way uh, you check it is if I move my arm, my pieces should slide. And that's how you can check to see if your pieces work together. These pieces slide. This is exactly what it is supposed to do. It kind of looks like a toy you may have had as a kid. Um, it's kind of fun. It does that little funky thing in Inventor sometimes, but uh, no big deal. I do know that my parts actually work. So again, this is your demo video for the rotating slider mechanism. Enjoy your day.